Hi, John Refrano here with another video tutorial. I was recently asked, how do you make text float on water? Uh, and this is very easy to accomplish in Vegas using a height map or a displacement map. So let me show you what I put together. I've got this video that I uh, have from uh, Digital Juice Video Tracks, and I've got text floating right on the surface of the water. I've got the talent coming towards the text, uh, and then as they get closer, we float the text away. So I'm going to show you how to uh, achieve this, uh, this look. First, we're going to do it with generated media, so you can just get an idea of, uh, of what the steps are. Um, I will insert a video track into my project. In fact, I need two video tracks. Uh, one of them is going to be the displacement map, and the other is going to be my um, actual video, be my title. Uh, and I will right click and we'll use some generated media for this. Noise media is really good uh, for doing this, a noise texture. So I'm going to insert a noise texture. Uh, as you can see, it's rather noisy and it's not doing anything. If you, if you were to play this, uh, it would not be animated. So we're going to make it a little less noisy. We want it to look more like water. And so I'm going to change the frequency here uh, to be a little uh, less busy. Then I'm going to move this cursor out to the end. Uh, and animate this by changing the progress in degrees. So now I'm going to hit F12 so you can see uh, uh, this. Now you can see how that's changing in the preview there. Right? And that's what we will use for our displacement map. We're going to make believe that's water and use that as a displacement map. Uh, so let me uh, zoom in a little bit with my mouse. I'm going to right click and insert the text media. We'll just leave the regular sample text there. and. The way you displace the text, of course you can't see it because this is hiding, but the way you displace the text is to go into your compositing mode and click custom and then pick either the displacement map or the height map. You don't want the bump map. In this case, I'm going to use the displacement map. And you can see already the text is being displaced by the displacement map. Let me move the cursor over and play it. And pretty much, you know, that's all there is to it. The text is now being displaced uh, and you can uh, change uh, the scale of how much it gets displaced and make it a little less obvious. I also like to use a height map. Let me show you uh, this with a height map. because so The height map gives you a little bit more control here. Uh, this is the same thing with a height map. To me it looks a little bit more watery, right, the way the height map works. And again, the amplitude here, let me go back so I don't create a keyframe. Uh, the amplitude determines, you know, how much you displace this, whether it's just a little bit and how high things get displaced, right? The elevation uh, of how high they get displaced. Uh, and now we'll just look at this. And that's all there is to it, to, uh, to displacing something, right? Those, those are the basic steps. Uh, now let's apply this to the video uh, that we we're going to use before. Uh, so I'm just going to delete these two tracks and drop in the video tracks video that I had before. Now you'll notice uh, and I was zooming out with my uh, my mouse button there. You'll notice that I've got a 16-9 uh, project and I've got a 4-3 uh, piece of media. So the first thing we have to do is correct that. Uh, I'm going to go into my event pan crop. I'm going to right click on the frame and say match output aspect. And there, it's already fixed it. Now the original video did have some black on either side and so I'm just going to crop in a little bit to get rid of that black. And now I've got a 16.9 video at a 4.3 video. Um, and now I need two of these because I'm going to have this in the background and I'm going to use it to drive the displacement. So I'm going to right click and say duplicate track. The reason I'm duplicating the track now instead of dropping the clip in is because as you see here, the event pan crop is already kept on the duplicated track. If I hide the top one, the bottom one is, is also uh, in the 16.9 aspect. So let me, uh, let me uh, put titles on these so we know what they are. This is the height map. We're going to use a height map to drive the water displacement. Uh, this is the video, obviously. I'm going to insert another track with a Control Shift Q. It's a quick way to insert a video track. I'm going to call this title uh, and drag it in between the two, sandwich it in between the two. So this will be my background down here. This will drive the displacement map. Now, if I just right click here and say uh, text generated media, what you'll notice is the media is not long enough. Uh, and of course, you could um, stretch it out. But because I'm going to keyframe, uh, I want to make sure it's one long piece of media. And I could change the length of the media. I'm just showing you a couple of techniques here. What I like to do, let me control Z uh, out of this, is double click the area 
that I want the media to fill. And then when I right click and say text media, the text media is the, the whole size of the area. All right, so let's change this to be come to Bahama. And we've got our text. Now, one of the things you might want to do, let me hide this displacement, um, is you might want to come into this text and make it broadcast safe. So to be broadcast safe, it can't be more than uh, 235, 235, 235. Now, there's another reason why I'm doing this. Um, if I had this glaring white computer-generated text on a piece of video that doesn't have whites that are that white, it, it kind of stands out and looks fake and says, hey, I'm computer-generated, even though in your mind you know the text had to be generated. Um, so if you keep it within the broadcast safe limits, and of course, uh, for black it would be 16, 16, 16, but we don't have any uh, black in this, in this text. Um, if you keep it within the broadcast safe limits, then it will fit visually better into, into the video. All right, so if we just uh, left this text up here where it is, it would kind of defeat the purpose of having the talent in the shot because you can't see her, it's covering her face. So I want to move that text down into the water. Again, let me move my cursor back to the beginning and I want to do this with 3D track motion. So we're going to open up uh, 3D track motion here. Uh, this is the uh, track motion, the original track motion. If I go to the mode, from source alpha, I change it to 3D. Now I've got the 3D controls. And I'm going to click in the perspective here and just zoom in with my mouse so I can see what I'm grabbing because I want to grab this Y and tilt it back. Uh, the, the X would rotate it uh, sideways and the, the Y tilts it back. And now I'm going to tilt this text. You can see up in my preview the text being tilted. And then I'm going to click on the text and bring it, bring it down and then maybe a little more. What I want to do is I want to kind of line up the plane with the, with the water to kind of sell the shot that this thing really is on the water. I think right about there is, uh, is probably good. Uh, so now I've got it uh, correctly in 3D space. Uh, if you wanted to make it exactly in, uh, forward and, and not uh, uh, move the X, I could zero out the X to make sure it hasn't moved uh, side to side. Now I've got my text. I can turn on my displacement. We'll turn this top layer back on. Again, we go into custom. This time I want to use a height map. I double click on the Sony height map and let's play it. And you can see that the water is being displaced, but something else is going on. The, the talent's being displaced. There's some black going on here. What's happening is because I simply turned on the compositing mode, it's compositing all the tracks beneath it. And I don't want that. I just want to composite uh, this one text track. So I'm going to use Make Compositing Child to make sure that this composite only wraps around this, this title. And you can see it cleaned up the picture quite nicely. And there's the water uh, floating over the, the, uh, the text, I'm sorry, floating over the water. Now, as the talent gets closer, you'll notice it starts to wrap around her body. And you might want that effect, uh, but we don't. So I'm going to go back and show you how to fix that. A couple of ways we can fix that. Um, right about there. I want the text to start doing something. One of the things it's going to do is fade out. So let me uh, move this in, fade the text out, and so now the text will fade away. But that doesn't look very realistic. So one of the other things we might want to do is make it disperse side to side. And uh, to make it disperse, I'm going to use uh, the text uh, property itself. So let me go into text, go to the properties, and I want to change the tracking. What tracking will do is it will change, see here, will change how close those letters are to each other, right? Uh, so what I want to do is I want to change the tracking. And I want to change the tracking at the exact point here on the timeline where uh, I start to fade out. But you'll notice there's no way to get to that point here because there's no sync to cursor in the generated media. So here's a little trick you can do to sync your cursor. We're going to double click down here where it's showing us the uh, the cursor position and then double click over here and do paste control V and voila my cursor has jumped to the position that it is on the timeline I can now add a keyframe I want to add a keyframe because I don't want anything to happen up until this keyframe I want it to keep what it's been doing and then when I get to the end um, and again I will do a control C double click control V to paste uh, when I get to the end now, I want to take the tracking and move the tracking way out. 
And if we come back on the timeline and watch that, you'll see that there it goes. Now you might want to add a little more to that effect. Maybe we'll go to the 3D uh, track motion and uh, let's position our uh, cursor. All right, it's at the beginning. We'll go to 3D track motion. And again, I'm going to, this one does have sync to cursor. So I'm going to uh, sync here and then move it a little bit forward. I'm watching. Uh, and what I want to happen is I want it to sink down into the water. And so now I've got it sinking into the water as well as dispersing out. And the last piece of effect I want to put on here is to go to my displacement map, uh, the height map rather, and do the same thing. Create a, um, a keyframe so that it stays before. And then as it comes out, I want to increase the amplitude. You can see it getting a little bit crazier there, the amplitude, uh, and maybe even the elevation a little. And now you get this nice dispersion uh, happening, right? Uh, so here's the whole thing. Nice text over the water, kind of giving you the illusion that it really is uh, on top of the water. And then as she gets closer, it disperses out. So there you have it. How to make floating text with uh, Sony Vegas Pro. I'm John Refrano. Until next time, thanks for watching.